But first, in two weeks, Alabama voters head to the polls to pick their next U.S. senator in a campaign rocked by allegations of sex abuse and counter accusations of a media witch hunt. Now, a foiled sting operation is bringing the divide between journalism and political activism to the forefront. The story broke last night. The Washington Post says it was targeted by a conservative group. According to the Post, a woman came forward claiming that Alabama's Republican Senate candidate, Roy Moore, got her pregnant when she was a teenager. She identified herself as Jamie Phillips, seen on the right in this video recorded by the Post. I want you to know that this is being uh, recorded. But reporter Stephanie McCrumman and others found inconsistencies in her claims. They also asked about an online comment of hers that suggested she's working with a group that goes after mainstream media or MSM. Do you still have an interest in, in working uh, in the conservative media movement to combat the lies and deceit of the liberal MSM? Is that, no. is that still your interest? No, not really. Yeah. Not at this point. The Post decided not to publish the story, and Monday morning, reporters spotted Phillips walking into the New York City offices of Project Veritas. The group is run by longtime activist James O'Keefe and has a history of targeting the news media and Democratic organizations using undercover video. Meanwhile, Roy Moore himself took aim at the media last night. He faces multiple claims of approaching or molesting teenage girls, but he's denied any wrongdoing. They're trying to hide the true issues. It's no different than when the Washington Post brought out the Russian investigation at a time when President Trump is trying to get his agenda passed. Outside the venue, several more campaign staffers scuffled with a Fox News camera crew. Meanwhile, on Twitter yesterday, President Trump called for a contest. He said it would decide, quote, which of the networks plus CNN and not including Fox is the most dishonest, corrupt and or distorted in its political coverage. The winner, said Mr. Trump, will receive the fake news trophy. For a closer look at all this, we are joined by Margaret Sullivan, media columnist at The Washington Post, and Michelle Holmes. She's vice president of content at the Alabama Media Group, which publishes the state's three largest newspapers. Welcome to both of you. Margaret Sullivan, to you first. What tipped off the Post reporters that what this woman, uh, Jamie uh, Phillips, was saying to them was not true? Judy, uh, the Post was doing what good reporters always do, as you know, which is to do a background check and to find out as much as possible about someone uh, before going with their story. So they were doing fairly standard kind of background check. And one of the things that they turned up, I mean, there were a number of red flags, but probably the the most um, obvious one was that they found a GoFundMe page on the Internet that seemed to suggest that uh, Jamie Phillips had gone to work or was going to work for an organization that would uh, set out to discredit um, establishment media. So this was something that certainly caught the Post's eye. And, and to you, Michelle Holmes, what has been the reaction there in Alabama to the Post exposing this attempt to, at a sting? Certainly, we at, at our newsroom are incredibly grateful and proud of the work that The Washington Post is doing. I think it certainly um, makes a mark for excellent journalism everywhere and lifts us all. Uh, I think across Alabama, I certainly hope this sends a message of the kind of dirty and underhanded tactics that people are doing uh, and, and attempting to discredit the media at this really critical time. Margaret Sullivan, when you couple this with uh, what we've seen as President Trump's repeated attempts to uh, criticize, discredit the news media through the campaign, through his presidency, to make the press essentially look dishonest, um, what effect do you think that has on the American people? 
Well, Judy, for some people, of course, it, it only um, makes their resolve greater that they want to understand what's true and, and follow reputable news sources. But I think for a number of other people, it does cast doubt. You know, it creates confusion. Um, who's telling the truth? Um, should we really mistrust the news media as much as the president says, or even half as much as he says? So it creates um, an atmosphere in which truth is, uh, is muddied. You don't really know who to trust. And some people throw up their hands and say, well, I'm going to tune out. I don't know uh, exactly who's right or who's wrong. It's all a big mess. And I think that's very dangerous. Michelle Holmes, all of this is obviously subjective. I'm asking the two of you to estimate, to, to give us your judgment of, of how the public is reacting. But what do you find in Alabama about trust of the media? Your own news organization editorialized uh, against Roy Moore. Are people still able to trust the reporting that your organization does, do you think? We've had a really strong response thanking us for the work that we've been doing. And I do think people in Alabama are intelligent and are able to distinguish an institutional editorial voice from, uh, from the kind of day-to-day -day hard reporting that our staff is doing. Look, our team of reporters are primarily people who were born and raised in Alabama. Uh, they're the neighbors of, of all of our news consumers. And I think many people see through the tactics of fake news. Certainly, uh, you know, the president's uh, push has played uh, played a really disturbing role, however, and, and, you know, we feel that ripple, too. But I think in Alabama, the work that we're doing is being seen for what it is, trying to call out truth in a really um, important time in Alabama politics and American politics. Margaret Sullivan, how do you measure this erosion of trust on the part of news consumers? Well, of course, you can look at the public opinion polls, and the numbers are, are, are discouraging there. But we also know that trust in institutions in general is way down. I've been trying to get out and talk to ordinary voters um, for months now. And actually, I don't find that kind of virulent dislike and mistrust that we see in the polls when I talk to regular people, including a lot of Trump voters. So I think that there's a question of, is it the media? and who who knows what that means, or is it the media that I follow, which I actually think most people feel pretty good about? And Margaret Sullivan, how do you see the role of the press in addressing this increasingly distrustful, uh, at least in some quarters, increasingly distrustful and sometimes outright hostile attitude toward the media, the news media? Judy, I think for the most part, we have to do our jobs as best we can. And uh, we also have to be as transparent as we can with our readers or viewers, news consumers, about how we do our work. For example, in the Post's original story about Roy Moore, there was a paragraph that was very clear about how the women hadn't approached the Post. The Post had actually found these women. and encourage them and convince them to come forward. And I think that helps people understand, you know, sort of how the sausage is made. And the more we can be transparent, I think the more trust we can engender. Well, some certainly remarkable reporting done by The Washington Post and uh, commendable reporting certainly done by the Alabama uh, Media Group. I want to thank both of you. Uh, Michelle Holmes uh, joining us from Alabama, Margaret Sullivan at The Post. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.